to share with you today um, out of the John Proctor collection and some of my stuff scanned of uh, airlines that have operated in Dallas, Fort Worth, and Dallas Love Field. And as a uh, side, I, I was just at the Paris Air Show this past week, so I did I added in some stuff from the Paris Air Show at the end just to show you guys that. So that was really cool to go to. So anyway, let's get started. Um, John Brocker um, was a huge aircraft historian, had a, a tremendous collection of slides and images that he collected for people over many, many years, and he was smart enough to put it all on digital, and he was good enough to give me a copy. Unfortunately, he passed away a number of years ago, and, but we still have his work to share, and um, so here we go. Um, after the TWA merger, uh, the American Americans started rebranding some of the uh, TWA airplanes. So there's a few of these in the collection. But either all these pictures taken are either at Dallas Love or Dallas uh, Fort Worth. And I will try to give information on, I don't know, you know, times and locations, it's just approximate, is it? Uh, so if anybody has anything they can add, yeah, that would be great. Thank you. This is obviously probably Dallas Love went back in the um, early 60s. It, just from the era, you can tell, um, you know, not a lot of, just the, the layout of the, of the ground there. No fences and stuff like that. Uh, another one at Love Field. You know, Brandon was a huge operator here at Love Field and uh, before they moved to DFW. So they have a huge presence here at Dallas Club. That's uh, that a, sir? That a That's a 138B, yes. That is the, the Qantas uh, airplane that, or Qantas had Boeing build the 138B because they needed that extra stage length between Honolulu and Sydney, or maybe they stopped in Fiji, I don't recall. Um, and Boeing was able to come up with a shorter fuse lodge, more long range tanks, and then Brandon ended up getting a majority of those 138 Bs. Brandon also was the only airline that operated the 200 series 707. Maybe there was six built. I know one of them crashed on um, flight testing. Only five, yeah, so only four. So very rare 707 uh, variant, 220, 227. I believe they were built for higher altitudes so they could be used in South America routes. What's your own impact? Those are... Uh, that's Braniff. That's the old Braniff. That's the old yeah. Braniff scheme there. That's the Braniff Maintenance and Operations Center. Yeah, this is the love field again. Another uh, 227. And all these are obviously in love field. Sorry if I have more in here than more than one, but there's some pretty good shots here, so. Uh, this, is, this is probably DFW, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, so, yeah. probably. Um, Sounds like three, 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 three in the back. Yeah. And you can see Texas International back there before they became part of Continental. Before Continental became part of Texas. <laughs> there's another team in the way for the um, merger and their final campaign scheme. Mm -hmm. There's one rebranded where they just, um, I guess, I think TBA operated it as a subsidiary for a short period, short period of time before they could get everything um, merged together, you know, pilot and groups and all that. So they worked the That's another story, unfortunately. I think, well, as I recall, Americans' philosophy is, well, you were at a carrier that was bankrupt and we bought you, so, you know, you're lucky you have a job. I know there's a lot of animosity with that. Uh, Eastern here with the Boeing 720 at Love Field. And this, this might be, that's a 720, 720. Yeah. Or, yeah, it's a seven point. But 
could say it could be a 227, but I don't think it is. Yeah, a seven point straight pipe. That's it, left field as well. Another 720? Yes. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, you know, my brand, my brand had a huge, um, they just, they just loved it. Came for airplanes in all different kind of colors, so it was very colorful. This was the pastel scheme. They had a purple, a green, an orange, a yellow. Yeah, they had all kinds of stuff. There's a whole lineup with the orchid and the, and the the periwinkle. There's a central condor there in the foreground. Uh, Mexicana at DFW. 727 Eastern at Brand. That's at at Oakfield. There's the brand headquarters and maintenance headquarters at the back. That was the uh, final scheme of Rana before they uh, declared bankruptcy. They had a dark green, a, a blue terracotta, it was a blue. It was just like four or five. It was a pretty, pretty cool scheme. It's like half plane coconut chocolate. <coughs> yes, there was a chocolate. I can't remember all the colors. I think it was a Southwest at Love Field. They um, had 727s at one point. There was a, if I recall, there was some sort of dispute between American or and Rana for Rana, and they won out and they got the rights to fly certain routes and they had to get 727s. So it was uh, this is early Southwest in the early 70s. I think. Yes? I do see, I noticed that Rana is just looking at the atom number that this is X Rana, which is the problem with Rana, I believe that's that. I believe that's about 10 X Rana. Who did? Yes, because I think I remember it. I, I well, think they, I had, uh, they had they had four, five, or six, seven, four, six. Yeah, yeah. I remember one point I had when I was a kid that had like all the list of detail numbers. It was ABC American Airlines. So one thing when I was a kid, and I can you know you can tell me was it a two two seven? Twenty seven was brand instead of American. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, this, this, is the, this is the brand port settlement claim that Southwest uh, East probably made. Oh, a lot of well, a lot of people had a lot of the brands. I know UPS had a bunch of the freighter or the converter the freighters. They had a lot of X brand at seven point seconds. And you're right, talking about the Boeing customer codes. Every airline was was given a customer code. Twenty one was Pan, thirty one was Dreamliner. So I and mean, I know for oh, sure that the end and the seven point seven dash eight, so they didn't have a customer code. But it was seven three hundred ER. That was the last time. Uh, yeah, well, I can, t I can tell you from um, because I work at UPS that we have 34A is our code, and now the certificate says dash 300. It doesn't say the 34A anymore. So they got away with that with all their deliveries. Uh, this is the um, after the shutdown, all the airplanes on the ramp at DFW. You can see all the different color schemes. Not everything remained into the older scheme before the before, before the shutdown. They just did this collection. I don't know what okay, it, was, no, it was part of his collection. I'm not sure if it's okay. No, I did not pay. No, I don't know where he got this. <clears throat> There's one of the terracotta schemes. Or that's the burgundy. That must be good. That's going to be the burgundy. That's the burgundy one. Uh, Southwest, the, um, the Max at uh, Love Field. They finally um, got rights to fly more places because the Red Amendment has, has expired, but there's still restrictions. If I remember correctly, that tail number is the one that's now a little one. Oh, oh okay. Thank you. Um, retro uh, Steam American. They have quite a few. They're 
predecessors in a their fleet. So that's, there's an Air Cal PSA. There's a TWP plant, US Air. There's the Reno Air that I'm, that I'm aware of. I know there's some more. Yeah, I know some of the, uh, I think some of the uh, uh, US and the jet, uh, King Jobs are being supposed to be moved to the 321, if I recall correctly. I know there's like a one, three things still in America West. I think they're raising their question. One of America's triple sevens. This is the, this is the newest color scheme. It's been around for quite a while. Three hundred ER. So long. Delta and that's is that one? No, that looks like it's a C. What the hell? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not sure why that's in there. You know, I did a search out of this collection, put in DFW and love, so maybe the registration or something. I apologize. That is not that is not Dallas Love Field or Dallas Forward. That's a Delta Gen. We'll move on here. Alaska at looks like DFW. Uh, Brandon, that was her first 747. It's a DFW. That was at one time the highest time 747 in service anywhere in the world. And the most because it did group Dallas, Honolulu, 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 Dallas, Dallas, London, London, Dallas, Honolulu. It flew probably 22 hours out of 24 hours a day. It was very highly utilized. American 757s, which I don't. I don't believe they have them in their fleet anymore. That might be an XT way, I see a TW registration there. Yeah, 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 I can tell because there's like a door close to back. They had like some halfway labs. Yeah, no, I see. Yeah, okay. so they, they were cracks. So yeah. We always had rolls. So. Uh, yeah, these are all these are all TW. I know the guy that took that picture. He was at work. Um, we have, we have, a, uh, we have a, a kind of a mini hub here. Um, next, well, we did next day air flights up until this one because of the slowdown in the economy. I guess we scaling back on the next day air, but we still have a second day hub that flights will come in about noon and leave at three. So if you guys are out one, and I think if you're out by the, um, the, the park this year, that's right near the UPS operation. We do have a 747 flight that comes in in the evening. It doesn't turn, so it comes in and sits. So you, 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 you might be able to catch one of our dash A's in here. Um, I don't know if it operates on Fridays. Uh, Cutter also served here at the at DOW. And Northwest was here before the Delta merger. And man, had a fleet of Bach 111s at one time. It's funny, those tail numbers wound up with many, many airlines in the United States for many years. They were in Ford Express. <coughs> they were all over the place. And then Brandon got them back. And the same Ford Express ended up with Brandon, too. Yeah. Yes. There's another uh, shot at Love Field. What is that? That's a 707. It's got that lower ventral fin. It is sticking over here on top. So, uh, Brandon had a fleet of C forty sixes. That's one of the critters. Mexicana was here. Here, no, that's a common. Common. Is that a common? Common. Yeah, regional service, American Eagle. Obviously, American Airlines has led them a calendar. So they were, I 
guess they were friends back in the day. <laughs> or maybe they just helped each other out, who knows. What was regulated? You're right, it was regulated. So maybe there was a system in place of, 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 of cooperation between airlines. I don't think that would happen today. Another counter. Yeah, he had some, he's got some great stuff in his collection. Uh, Central Airlines, that is a Condor 600, which was the powered dark, Rolls Royce dark engine. Very loud airplane. Very loud. And what Central became part of Frontier? Yes, yes. Okay, so that was before. Um, and I believe Lamar Muse was the CEO of Central. In later life, he uh, he was the CEO of Universal Airlines in Detroit. They had the freighter company, and they had ordered two 747s, and the board threw them out because they didn't want him to get 747. So I think then he went on to what Muse Air and some other things. But he had a long legacy as a, as a career as a, as a CEO of the airlines. Uh, Frontier. Another central, the uh, Condor 600. There's a transect, it's the uh, Condor 600. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a shot I know because it's on market. It's uh, John Proctor's brother, Bob. I don't know if Bob is a pilot or he, I, he may have worked in it, but he took a lot of pictures. There's quite a bit of stuff in, in John's. Oh, I'm sorry? He was a mailman. He was a mailman, yes. So he took a lot of pictures, so there's a lot of Bob Proctor stuff in this collection. This is a way early picture of man. Probably back in the 30s, I would imagine, early 40s. There's another shot of our field of Central and some Granite Airplanes. Out metal, and I think. Now, I'm trying to think, this hangar was probably built in the late 60s, right? No. No? Early 60s. So what is this, 1965 maybe? Uh, a little bit earlier, by 65, not only in Denver and Okay. Because okay. I'm thinking, wow, here it is in the mid-60s, they still have DC-3s in their fleet. Well, they were still trying to shed a lot of the old, I mean, pioneer cities. Right. Oh, 
There's another DC six. The Mexicana six. Six, yeah. So I see, you see now this is what it feels. So Delta and the hang are there as well at one point. Another DC six. DC seven and up here. There is a congregate Christmas tail being shown there of Delta. And Eastern DC six. The Continental DC six. Seven. Seven. Four props. Sorry, I had to look at I didn't count. <laughs> it looks to me maybe maybe these are maybe you can take it out of service or DC seven C. Yeah. There's one of the original DC fifties Delta Head and Fleet with the full Delta Airlines title. Transcribing in DFW, this, I believe this is after the merger, so the American did not take the DCAs in their fleet. Yes, uh, I believe this is the demonstrator was at Love Field for uh, trying to sell at the certain airlines. But, um, I don't think that happened. They probably were there to see if Randall was interested. Transsex is DC-9. Yeah, it was QC, yeah. Another uh, TPA, um, the MD-95, I call them, the clearly, the 712. Is that, a, is that an That's an AP, I think. Is that? Look, look at the top of the thing. Oh, okay. I, I didn't see a door back there, so I just thought. The first one, you doors on the other side. Uh, I think the angle of the picture makes it look shorter. There we go. That's an AP. That, that's the 90. This is the 90? Yeah. Because the engine's right there. Oh, no, no, that's, that's an AP. It's an AP. So okay. this is a AP as well. Okay. The first one you showed was the 90. This one is a DC MD90? No, the first one, the first one. Yeah. Way back in the beginning? Yeah. Oh, man. You want to do that again? Should we start over? <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a. Is this a. The first one? That's the very last MD80 bill. Okay. Oh, man, look at DC10. How about that? There's a one in the hangar. There's a, a shot of one of the, uh, I don't know what channel it is, but that, is that, that the Grand Hotel? Is, is that the Grand Hotel? We're in that hotel. Yeah, that's that part of the Grand yeah. Hotel right there. So it's C. Okay. Yeah, it's C. It's three C. Back in the day, so. Oh, all right, four. Oh, there's another band of uh, like her. So is this the hotel we're in now? Yes. 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 The East Tower. The West Tower is what was taken down to make D and Grand Hyatt. Oh, all right. Well, that's cool. Thank you. Yeah, that was in the collection. I thought that would be cool to show. There was me one in the uh, blue, blue skin. And look, a Frontier 7-2. Yes, very rare. No, it's got a door in the middle. It's a one way. Another man of electric. One more. Commodore 990. Fastest subsonic jet ever built. Mach 8 or Mach 92 or something like that. They called it the 990 because it was 990 feet per second in cruise. I think the 880 was just a little bit behind it, but yeah, quite an airplane. Another electric. Yeah, another electric, American. A lot of low fuel, 720s. Is that Moe's one thing? No, that's from Texas. That's Texas. Uh, Continental White White Count. Seven forty sevens. 
American had quite a few, and they converted seven freighters. UPS actually had one in their free freight system, freight converted to a freighter. We had one for many years. And I, these here I think I took back in the mid-90s and I scanned them in on a poetry of the other. Yeah, they used to name their airplanes luxury miners. So seven by seven, luxury seven, 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 six, seven, seven, four, seven, they don't do that anymore. I'm sure they're still luxury miners. Hey, while well, you're uh, we'll move on real quick. I went to the Paris Air Show this week, and I thought, oh, I should add this in just to, just to show you some of the stuff that I saw. Fascinating show. Uh, they did an air show every day between one and three. Airbus flew their Neo. Uh, Boeing flew the 737 Max 10 and the 777-900. Then there was uh, Embraer flew one day. And there was some military stuff, but I got quite a bit of static stuff to show. I don't have anything in flight because of my films I'm developed yet. But here we go. Uh, that's kind of walking to go into the uh, start of the uh, pavilions. I thought that was kind of cool, Boeing, but it, <laughs> there's a Cutter A350 on the screen. <laughs> it's not appealing. No, they made up. They made up. They're friends now. Here's the uh, Max 10, we were able to get tours of it. It's actually a very nice airplane. I was amazed to find out they were saying in coach configuration, this airplane will hold 230 people. And I'm like, that's a 757 motor. Yes. That's, that's crazy. I, I, yeah, I, just, I don't know. In this case, the Max 10 would be replacing the 930R. I don't know. But that, it was under, it's still under development, experimental. It's not ready for delivery. And was that static one? No, they oh, flew it. They flew in the afternoon. I got to see it fly. That's the cockpit of the MX-10. And they had it set up with all the uh, stations to do all the testing. There was a whole bunch of computers and stations for people to sit at and do analyzation. And being a pilot, I thought, wow, they really do a lot. They do spend many, many hours of testing before that airplane ever came to one passenger. So I, I, you know, I give my hats off to the manufacturers for their, their due diligence to try to make all this stuff work. Um, Riyadh Air is a new airline, and they're the 797, I'm sorry, 787 9 or that. And Dash 9 customers. So they had one on display. They haven't started service. That Dash 9, right? 7779. Yeah. Beautiful color scheme. But there's, they've ordered like 80 of them, and they're going to start service from Riyadh all over the world. That's their plan by 2030. Got a little close up of in front of the airplane. Uh, the 7, 7 900 was there, and uh, we got to tour that airplane as well. That's a 777 X, right? Yeah, 777 X. You can see the homing uh, wings that you can fit the uh, gates. Correct, yeah. Um, actually, that I did not know this until this last weekend, but I should show but that wing is designed by a company called Beaver. They build cranes, construction equipment, and they do a bunch of aviation stuff. So that's their design that they did for Boeing. The airplane I saw it fly is very quiet. Um, my only comment that I was kind of unhappy was there was no U.S. carriers that were flying that airplane. It's all foreign carriers. So who knows? Maybe maybe some big airline or U.S. airlines will buy it. But I think um, Singapore, Emirates. I can't see all the motors. There was about I think Lufthansa. There's about 10 airlines that are going to buy this airplane. So the airplane. Uh, that's the plan, yeah, because it's going to hold about 400 million. Yeah, so no, uh, well, they had, you know, 747s at one time, so who knows? Anyway, there's a better, better shot of the main. It folds down. 
and they don't fold it down until, until um, they're ready for takeoff. Like just to say, pull under the runway, they put it down. I, I thought they would do it when they taxi out, but they wait. The other thing is they have a, this is during the testing. This is an add-on for a tail skid in case of um, airspeed, rota early rotation tests. Obviously, they don't want to damage the airplane, but I've never seen one attached to an airplane like that. I thought that was pretty interesting. And then here's the Max being towed out to get ready for its um, air show. And this is the, uh, the new E195 E2, which is supposed to be very environmentally sound. It flew. It was very quiet as well. I guess it has a really good um, emissions. It doesn't, it doesn't burn a lot of emissions, which is good. And there was a, one of the prototype A380s there parked in the corner, because there is a museum here at Lake Ward Day, so it was kind of nice to see. But it's just sitting back there. Yeah. I, someone in front made the comment that there, the A380 has been in service for over 20 years. It's like, wow, I just, time is just gone on. Oh, yours truly in front of the truck. So <laughs> uh, it was about 85 degrees every day and humidity of about 80%. It was, I was worn out after three days. But I had a great time. Good, some, some good pictures. Um, the new ATR 600, they got a school is the large customer. Again, they, they were pushing the big carbon footprint that they're efficient and quiet and I guess it would sort of be good for small regional groups. So keep up in airplane. Air France or Airbus A220-300, I think that must be a stretch version of the A220. I don't know if it's in service yet. Uh, Charles Lindbergh landed it and I found I found a plaque via Phil Brooks, thank you, Phil. <laughs> I, I actually, I looked on a map, I couldn't find it, and I'm wandering all the ramp. Where the heck, and it was, it was right in front of me the whole time. It was just hard to see because it was embedded in the concrete. At the time of day, it was hard to read. So I got a better picture the next day. Here, Jim Blue was there with Airbus. That's one of their new ones. There's another shot of the uh, Max 10. So Boeing things were on that side, and Airbus stuff is on this side, on the ramp. There's just a, a general shot of part of the museum. They have a 747 there and some bunch of space rockets. Um, Qatar had one of their executive uh, eight Airbuses there. And another fans. Probably got two of them in the same, sorry. Also the A330 tanker. Oh, there's my camera. I got caduce for uh, people when I was at the brand tank. You're still shooting film with it, yes sir. Wow. And um, look at the size of that lens there. That's a 600 millimeter lens that the guys got there. So. And it'll be again in 2025, so two more years. And I'm sorry, I thought I had a, a, a Cutter uh, Airbus A350 in there. I must have gotten deleted my mistake. It, it was there on the show as well. But uh, thank you for uh, coming out to watch the uh, picture show. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I know, I do want to. If you, John Proctor, we still have his website up. And if you're looking, he has a whole list of airplanes, different airports, a lot of pictures. So if you go to that website, um, you can see a lot of his work online. Thank you.